We are well on the road back to the national championship, taking names and crushing dreams for any opponent in our path. Salona Beach is off to a 6-0 start. We survived a couple close scares early in the season, squeaking out a 21-18 win over Appalachian State in week one, and then another close one, 24-22 against USC in week two. We just needed to find our footing with a youth movement on offense, and when we came to face Coastal Carolina, our rival, that's when we really kicked it up a gear. A lot of underclassmen in starting roles. In some of them are really starting to step it up a notch. We will need them to step it up another notch as we work through the Mountain West and get to the playoffs. On the recruiting front, Philip Rivers is having no trouble bringing in the next generation of Salona Beach sponges. Already nabbed 10 scholarship guys at the halfway point, spearheaded with three 80 plus overall signees, including Kelvin Pryor here, an 81 overall tackle. 81 overall receiver, Zach Landry, the number one receiver in the nation. Could be related to Jarvis Landry, you never know. And David Gardner, a gem of a cornerback. More in in store as our coaching staff continues to wine and dine some of the best talent in the nation. Remember, certified winners go to Salona Beach and it's time for our squad to get some certified wins against the competition and it starts with Lil Bro, San Diego State. It was much closer in the beginning of our school's history, but nowadays it's not too much of a competition. I mean, San Diego State is our heated rival here based in San Diego. It's always a good game, a good show out, I should say, because on the game side of things, we let it fly. At the halfway point, we're sixth in the nation and we're ready to kick off the second half of year seven with a bang and we're gonna do it in style and nothing like starting in style with a quick pass to stone boston who just sheds through one guy and gets 19 out of it scrambling out here we got a nice connection with Dwayne cade and we're just bouncing around tackles today over the last couple years philip rivers has really turned around this team and he's brought in the right guys for the job flirting just outside the red zone we got two guys but joe davis says give me that and give me six i'll go in and kick off the opening drive with a touchdown. I don't think the Mountain West is ready for what's about to hit them. I mean, they got a dose of it last year. They're going to get a whole nother dosage this year. And goodness gracious, Clark just found his way through the coverage. I don't see John John on the defensive line right now. So I really, really hope he didn't get hurt. Okay, good. He's back on the line. Maybe I was just overreacting here and I'm all over it. No way. Fourth and two. Gabe White, the dual threat makes a stop. Aztec Nation, you guys are not satisfied. Fourth and two, and you got it. Converted and scored. We'll see what type of game this one's going to turn out to be. High scoring or back and forth. Third and 11. Let's just jump it out to Brian Williams. We literally have three comparable tight ends on this team, and we're deploying one of them as a receiver. Stone Boston with the stone hands, though. Come on, my man. It's your first big rivalry game. I get it. You might have a little bit of nerves here, and I'm going to scramble. Oh, we got a man. Can we connect? No. Super hard to convert when you're going across your body. Anyways, we'll get the stop on defense and hold him to at least three. Not too shabby when you can do that, and not too shabby when he misses it either. We'll take those. All right, now that we got a fresh opportunity, it's time to make the most of it, and what in the world, guys? Let's convert here on third down. We have Stone Boston with a step, and he stones it again, dude. I've seen that like twice in the last quarter. I hope everyone takes a second to get the jitters out because I do not want to see another stone-handed attempt in this next drive. Three and outs making the defense work really hard. And yeah, Aztecs driving. Everybody, let's clamp it down. And that's exactly what we're going to do. I don't think the Aztecs can trust their kicker very much as he's missed two kicks already early in this one. And Joe Davis, yes, sir. Big third down here, it's Brian. And when in doubt, we always can trust Brian. No need to rush here. I think we got time to just work this one down into the goal line. You're kidding me. Zach Miller got hurt going down on that last one. So we're forced to go with Randall. Strange is back. He will be back in a just a quarter. That's no pun intended. Third and 18, literally no time left. And we got dropped. So we're just going to kick a field goal. Looks like there's more to this rivalry game after all. And how many times has our kicker just doinked it? off the goalpost. Someone has got to step up here if we want to win this ball game. Maybe it'll be Dwayne. We never know. Coming out of halftime, of course, we're going to go for it on fourth down. It's the momentum this team needs. And just like that, we have a little bit of breathing room. That's what we like to see. Just got to replicate that opening drive and get some momentum. Knocking into the red zone. I think we can get it here if I connect with Stone Boston. And why did that just have that arc, that lob, everything? Oof. At least the defense has also stepped it up while the offense stutters. Will anything go here on this third? 
third down. I see Cade with a step, and geez, an underthrown ball again. We should have led him down the field. It's all knotted up. They're going with a handoff draw, and it's going nowhere. This dude's literally 0 for 2 so far, kicking the ball, and make it 0 for 3. If the Aztecs converted in all three point attempts, they would be up 19, or sorry, 16 to 7, a nine point differential. Definitely crazy when you think about it like that, and we're going to have to step up and scramble in this one and just get the first. I'm just going to chalk it up to rivalry game jitters because honestly, there's a lot of fingers to point blame at in Boston right now, dropping three balls. That's uncharacteristic. These offensive scares are just a little too much for me right now. Pass midfield here. Quick strike to Stone. Thank you, sir. Glad you finally came to play now. I mean, it's the end of the game and all of it counts in a big way. And first and goal, the defense looks like they're in disarray. Can we catch them napping? And I think we just got it with Zach Miller. Not very pretty in this rivalry matchup today, but it's a good start right here with the defense swarming. Win is a win at the end of the day, and all we want to do is win, and oh man, he got just enough. Under a minute to go, they are working quick. Aztecs want points, and we say you're going to have to feel the wrath of our big men first. Looking for someone out here to make a special play. Who's going to be that special player? Clark, I don't want you to do any more damage than that. I was talking a lot of smack before this one. I got to live up to the words I was saying. And Avery says, I got you, coach. I got you. Hold on now. The linebacker, Avery Avery, who can also play safety. Man is a hybrid defensive beast. Gets the game ceiling pick. Love me a good old fashioned defensive stand to cap it off. A turnover for the win. It's beautiful, beautiful stuff. Managed to squeak past a rival, the Aztecs, but a win is a win up to 7 and 0 we go Wyoming Cowboys who's ready to brawl Alex Tolbert the number one defensive tackle is on a visit right now to see us whoop up on some Cowboys so let's give the man a rodeo he won't forget as John John gets the word from Philip Rivers saying hey man just play your heart out have some fun go sack some boys you know what I mean Zach Miller needs to shake off his rough performance last game only one touchdown a low clip and last time I checked that player they were showing was not Zach Miller but anyways this is Zach Miller to Tim Williams first down I cannot wait to bring a new team to life in the next EA college football video game and trust me your boys got something cooking right now I am excited nonetheless and with that big play we are already down into the red zone put in work we had a quick start against the Aztecs so we can't be off guard and what a pick by Pleasant there that's a pleasant surprise for their guys I didn't think he was coming down with it that was one I didn't think was gonna happen I'm not gonna lie I'll keep it a buck on this third down I think we can have a better result potentially Hood says wait a minute all right this time's for real third third down is a charm or not oh my gosh we're 0 for 3 pushed him back again on another third down maybe the fourth time's a charm and yes it is with the ball back in our hands we're ready to soak it up up. And yes, sir, Zach Miller. I love what I'm seeing. In the next game, I'm definitely running a playbook that has the read option. It's just part of my DNA. When you have a quarterback that can do it all, it just is a cheat code. I'm not going to lie. Guys like our five star here, Zach Miller, I'm going to have to find creative ways to keep them in the city because in the next game, the transfer portal is a very real reality. Back within the five, that's where we belong. And Brent says, this is where I belong in the end zone. Another touchdown. Throughout this series, you've seen that man do it 40 times by now. One touchdown is usually all it takes to open up the floodgates, and I want more. But I guess I'll just have to be okay with three points this time around. Having a 93 overall defense in the Mountain West is a cheat code as well. I'm not really worried about the Wyoming Cowboys today. I'm not going to lie. I'm not looking past them, but I'm not worried about them. And that was a crazy sensational run. You are that guy, pal. You are. <laughs> and hold on. I... Might need to take that back. Two minute drill, time for some points, and Brent is hungry for the end zone. When a man is hungry, I have to feed him. You know how it goes. You never leave a man that's hungry unfed and look at Williams man so inspirational Brent got a little too tired to finish the drive but his buddy scope here will finish it off for him just walking the dog third and two they're dropping back to pass and hood snags it here we go first and goal the goal line troops are in and they couldn't get the stop fourth and inches here already up by 10 it's a little risky to go for it but I want to ensure that what this drive continues and that we can get more points who wants to make a big play for me I think you do Cade wearing down the defense with our fast 
Tempo, and what is up with this pleasant guy? He has hands of glue. Third and short here. We're gonna bring the house and stop him for the fourth. I assume they're going for it. This is risky. We're calling the send out all out blitz. So it left receivers open. And yeah, that's what I was worried about. Not the highest IQ play call there, but hey, it's gonna be okay in the end. I'd be a little more worried if it was a one possession game, but knowing that it's two possession game and the defense is swarming, our defensive line is built different and check out Gabe White. Do a smile do a dance touchdown it's wraps in this one 20 seconds left i told you brent was hungry earlier and so i had to fulfill my promise and give him another touchdown shout out to all the fans packing out and selling out this one salona beach is on top we are cruising right now through the season eight and oh who's gonna stop us alex tolbert came to visit us and we're still in a battle against alabama to get him but michael green said i've seen enough i'm coming to salona beach and he's committed he's a quarterback 77 overall that could be a nice depth piece. Quick look, we're going blow for blow with Alabama right now. We have a defensive line tradition here at Salona Beach, though. That has been a hallmark of this team. Just talk to John John and see why you should come here. We have a problem that's not very common in our realm so far, but I have way too many points and I don't know what to do with them. So I got to go find some more dudes. Wasn't too picky. Just picked up some guys that didn't have a school really competing for him at this moment. So far, I only like Copeland, the one-star fullback. We need some depth there. And there we go. Joel Brown, not too shabby. So Joel Brown gets the rest of my points. Just cracked back into the top five. And one thing I noticed off the rip is I don't see Georgia anywhere in the vicinity. In fact, this top five is intriguing. Number four, BYU. Number three, Miami. Number two, Tennessee. And number one, Illinois. Nebraska, Auburn, Florida, Army, and Cal rounding out the 10. This is wacky. And confirmed national champion Georgia, who beat us last year, is not even in the top 25. With all of that in mind, we have to keep our sights focused on one game at a time. So Fresno State Bulldogs, I'm coming coming for you, but I got my eyes on the other competition in the four spots above. Nothing like starting here on defense and getting the clamp job and clamp job indeed. Gabe White, airborne, that man took off. Talk about a true freshman making Salona Beach proud out here. He is a stud muffin. He keeps playing like that. He's going to get a bag at the next level. So uh, exciting stuff from Gabe. That set us up in a really, really good position here to just go across the middle. Stone Boston hangs on and we're working. And now let's go ahead and and finish off the drive with six going across for the touchdown to Tim Williams. Mwah, it's this chef's kiss. Really good stuff early in this one. Great execution on both sides of the ball. Bringing in the cleanup crew. Let's finish her off. Big hit, big stick fourth down three backs in the backfield handing off to scope here on the fullback dive and he takes it let's go with the read option here zach see what you can do my man zach attack do it again i think third and ten is a fair time to call it when you got a threat like this seeing if anyone gets open here right down the middle that was extremely inaccurate we'll call up the deep attack here and go across that middle and another inaccurate pass pressure is getting to him right now i'm opting not to punt i think we can go for it here and yes we get it off to Cade, who breaks on through using his speed to move down the sideline watch out better not pout the sponges are coming to town i'm telling you why fourth thing goal a smart person takes their three points but we are not that person we're going for the touchdown and we didn't get it no way don't use this often but i'm challenging the spot of the ball realistically he probably was just short but man yeah he was just short we got so close so they're at like the inches line here and i'm just bringing a massive blitz in and unfortunately for us they get it off should be up by more right now but hey we'll take a fourth down and get the ball back not just we'll take the ball back we're also also gonna take a goal line opportunity to plunge in. So gonna call a blitz here. It's a little risky, but it actually pays off as they're out of time and called their last time out. Holding the opposition to a field goal, that's a pretty good job, I'd say, when we were in the danger zone. And now with a filthy juke. Oh my gosh, if I just stayed in bounds. See if he can do it again, though. Does lightning strike twice? So far, the answer, well, it's a good run. And we are on the move again. Ew. Just getting bullied on the offensive line. As you can see, the last play hurt our quarterback and we got the backup in Randall. Randall's all about that action though and he wants to connect with his good friend Gabe White to the end zone. Touchdown, have yourself a day. Not only kick off the game with the interception, but to get a big six. Third down lo looming here. He just steps out of bounds. And with fourth quarter football, you already knew it was too late for the Bulldogs, as that is a common place for many of the opponents we face. I'd bet and say that if you're not within one possession when the fourth quarter's here, you're probably going to lose. In 99.99% of the time, that's right. Not much left to see in this one. We did what we had to do. Fresno State could not stand against the wrath of the sponges. Over the last couple of years, Hawaii's actually been stepping it up a bit. And 
and they're 83 overall so impressive kudos to those guys unfortunately they're just going to hit a roadblock in us more prospects on the field side today ready to watch our team roll we're ready to pass we're ready to run we're ready to lift we're ready to tackle hit pick score gonna do it all it's gonna be a complete game of football is my bet like i said hawaii's been turning around they're seven and two so that's really cool to see when you start getting this deep into a rebuild it's neat to see what teams step it up got some pressure in our face i feel it i feel it and we're gonna still deliver joe davis second and three just gonna hand it off up the middle brent again gash after gash tom to let miller cook it's miller time and he wanted to show up with the hops nice sustained drive all the way down into the red zone lobbing it up to brian williams fighting for with with every last inch of him just crosses the goal line touchdown here we go handoff draw just kidding it's a play action and he's scrambling and going nowhere having team builder back in the next game makes me extremely happy i'm not gonna lie not only just having the game back is one of the biggest dubs of 2024 having team builder is like the cherry on top turning out to be a pretty good year is it not how's everyone else doing in the comment section let me know i think if we can come down and score with authority on this drive too it's gonna say a lot solona beach has a lot to consider with the offer they're getting to go into another conference next year it might be worth a thought because then we'll face really tough power competition week in week out other conferences seem to think we're there and i might have to agree with them i mean brian williams does it again if i recall from last year hawaii was the team that almost spoiled our trip to the natty so far so good this year in our revenge tour and ah first and goal ready to stonewall these guys i'm coming in hot and he just breaks free slasher and co we'll try to get him short i don't want to sell it on the run and it was a run thankfully cover two was good enough third and three just gonna go over the middle boston man you got to get some grip boost had his fair share of highlights and low lights but i expect that from a freshman looks like the mountain west is not home to the automatic kickers out here because they're struggling to just cash in for three and key says i'll give my team another chance thought i would see if my receiver was ready for a contested one-on-one -on -one ball and he was not instead we're looking at a third and two here i'm plugging that gap with avery avery and we'll hold him again this time he was able to split the uprights and we'll have about 40 seconds here to see if we can come down the field and get some extra points here we go and yes i see a breakaway Dwayne cade we love to see it just get the acceleration going my friends Let's go ahead and try to do it again i say why the heck not this time to stone boston into the five let's give it to brent burrell the touchdown vulture to cap off that drive and picking up the second half like we never left let's go ahead and get that first down conversion red zone action absolutely Absolutely stroking that thing and Tim Williams first in goal big third in goal up with Brent in around the defenders have yourself a day when a seven and two team comes into town and you hold them to six points you're doing something right the disrespect with the backups in just going for it on fourth and inches already up 35 six gotta let them come in and get their reps as well because no everyone wants to eat you have room to breathe when you're up this big so with the cushion in mind brent burrell getting it done only nine carries today the sponges are 10 and 0 boom clap that's the sound of my recruiting board alex tolbert sean white david hall to you remember the name we continue the climb as byu 11 and 0 miami 10 and 0 just in front it's boise week and oh how the tables have turned boise state is 77 overall that's actually the bottom half of the mountain west not to mention they're three and seven as well keep lining up the prospects we got more visiting and bring on salona beach the sponges ready to pack out this one again at home and there's extra buzz in the air because it's the final game at home this season and it's senior day now odds are we'll be right back here hosting the mountain west championship game in just a couple weeks on offense we're not losing a boatload of players we are losing guys like brent burrell though so we appreciate the service couple offense alignment and then chavis our fullback also departing at the end of this one but where we're gonna feel it most is john john and the defensive line absolute legend here in salona beach and stone boston another wannabe legend in the making making his mark early on senior day let's feed brent burrell and let him cash in not only john john but linebackers like victor stevens here who's been holding it down for a while <sighs> the recruits grow up so fast man don't they it's been a beaut watching them develop just have to get right here across the middle it's brian he's throwing a man down and we're in the five here we go midline iso miller runs over a fella and says how you doing we're into the end zone 
Big Six. How we're treating Boise State right now is how the old school Boise State Broncos used to play. 2000s, 2010s, Boise State was different back then, winning Fiesta Bowls. Should be on the come up once more in the Mountain West this year as they got some fresh talent from the portal. So excited to see what they do. But yeah, in the game right now, it's Salona Beach, no one else. It's a blowout in the making, so I recommend Buster Bronco and the guys to go fire up the bus because they're not going to be here for much longer. Zach Miller can outrun anyone on the defensive line, and that's what a dual threat quarterback can do for you. On occasion, these plays don't pan out, so we have to use the legs, and Tim Williams will pan out in this instance. What you know about rolling down to the deep when Zach Miller has an open receiver, we missed him. In reflection, I think if I paused and took a second there, I probably would have been able to connect with our guy, and we'll connect with Joe Davis stretching in, and he is just short, but what a contested catch in traffic on this play. So it's senior day, right? So let's let Glenn Chavis cash in on the fun. Senior fullback spin it laying down the wood. Zach Miller a little bit injury prone here. He's sidelined again in this one, but it doesn't matter. Randall Cooper wants in on the fun. Randall Cooper was a Juco transfer and he too is a senior on the roster. So it's encouraging stuff to just have everyone contribute today. Yep. The score you see is correct. 35-0 here in the first half of football. Boise State is reeling. Randall Cooper still out there on offense, and it's kind of hard to tell if Zach Miller's still injured or if we're just letting the second the second stringers take it over. So got the rest of the first string around him right now, so maybe we're just letting Randall have some fun. Disrespectful, maybe, but it's senior day after all, and Brent and Randall are big pieces of this team. So I'm definitely making sure we honor them in this final game. Final seconds winding down. Randall lobs one up. He's got Cade for six. Final minutes and seconds winding down in this one. It's like a passing of the baton as we we had our freshman running back and a couple other guys getting some snaps. We refuse to let Randall go out sad like that, so we have to give him one more opportunity to make a pass. Wiggins, the freshman, getting some carries in this one. He looks promising for the future. Just under 50 seconds left. Like I said, we're not letting him go out sad like that, so we're going to complete to Joe Davis. Now at least he can say his last pass was a completion for 23 yards. And what a win indeed. Shutting out Boise State at home in the final game at home. Shutout wins lead to more commits. You NLV Rebels, it's time to get it on the black void field, so you know what that means. It means we're going to sim the game. Yeah, I don't sim like any game at all. If I, I, I try not to. I never want to, but the Black Void, this is unbearable to like watch, I'm sure for you guys, and unbearable for me to play. So it's the one time we can leave it up to the CPU to determine how well or how poorly we play. And so far, we're off to an early 7-0 start. They get a field goal, back and forth it goes, winding down before half, nothing doing. Third quarter action, it's pretty low scoring, back and forth. UNLV, I Thought they are about to take the lead there. We kick the field goal up by four. We're going to go possession by possession here. See who comes out on top. And oh my gosh, UNLV making things interesting here. And you see that right. Big fumble Ruski. Stone is on top of it. So Miller's going to kneel this one out. And that is the final. I'm really glad we won, but 10 to six. You're serious? Conference championship week. Updated look at the top three. BYU, Miami, and then us. I'm not sure what's knocking our points here. Is it the Mountain West Prestige? Anyways, this is a little bit crazier to me. Four and eight Air Force meeting us in the championship game. Is this a joke? How are the Falcons back in this thing? There must have been absolute implosion on the mountain side of the Mountain West. I mean, we just beat three and seven Boise State. So a four win Air Force is in the championship game. We want more than the Mountain West Championship. Trust me, we're looking at the national. So unfortunately for them, we're going to have to give them the rough and tough treatment that they are are not ready for. Read option. I don't know. Are you ready for Zach Miller? He is running right through a man in a couple more. That's a gritty play right there, folks. I am not going to lie. And Dwayne Cade also has got some grit. It's championship weekend. We're looking to see who's got that dog in them. And Dwayne Cade says, I am a dog. Second and long here. And the man coverage is getting exposed here and there. As I call one more man coverage play, because why the heck not? I'm trusting in the defense, and it paid off. They never learn, do they? And uh, they're going to have to learn in the NFL, too, because he's going to be a menace. I predict a surefire first-round pick, honestly. If you're not getting him in the first round, you're getting uber value. Just moving down the field like we do. Always love me a good bench, and that works to Cade. And he just shrugs him off. Little juke, and just falls. Going to take a breather now after that play, and we're going to cook with our 10th straight pass 
pass completion and Boston not to be denied. You look across the board and these are names you're going to have to get familiar with because they're going to be here for a long time. Hand off Brent Burrell, red zone machine. I like the result the first time. Let's hand it to him again. End zone touchdown. That is his 15th rushing touchdown of the season, a school record. Or maybe I read that wrong. 15th total rushing touchdown of the year, potentially. Nah, we've scored more than 15 rushing touchdowns. I gotta believe. Who's not gonna get a rushing touchdown? That's Air Force. But in this case, I think Brent Burrell scored 15. Back to work and back to Williams. We're just shedding tackles everywhere. Like I said, Air Force is honestly a tune-up in the way of our big dance. As a freshman, Zach Miller led us to 13 wins, and as a sophomore, he's leading us right back. Second half football, how is Air Force going to game plan against us now? About time we go for some more points. I think we're long overdue, so why not just give it to the speedster? There aren't any cadets on this roster that are as fast as our guys. And if you weren't sure what's going to happen with the outcome of this game, well, this touchdown should convince you. And yep, I'm right, 16th touchdown there of the season for Brent Burrow. Shall we go ahead and go for 17. Why the heck not? Encore. Did someone say encore? Do you really want me to go for my 18th? We'll see how the cookie crumbles in this one because Zach Miller also would like one. Shoot, I just can't resist. 18th touchdown for Brent Burrell. All right, man. Want to see me do it again? Two point conversion just for emphasis. Well, if Brent was still in, he could go for 19, but the backups are in and they're looking to score themselves. Randall on the slant play gets his boy Williams in zone. We don't need to see any more because the Mountain West champ is right here staying in Salona Beach back to back to back we're three-time champs and Salona Beach has no plans of letting go the revenge tour is not complete without one last shindig that's right we're facing the BYU Cougars in the national championship game BYU maintained the one seed and did not lose a game this entire season Miami was the second seed but fell to six so that means they lost the ACC championship game this is crazy to me the top three BYU players 84 overall 82 overall 82 overall Yet they were a top two defense and top 10 offense. That's going to make a fun one in this one. BYU Cougars in the national championship. Salona Beach Sponge is back in the championship as well. We are on the revenge tour. We're not going to let it slip this time. We got to send home folks like John John with a big time ring. So it's all about revenge. And it starts right here right now Williams down the sideline past midfield time to see what this BYU team's made of as they were feisty on both sides of the ball now they're not feisty enough to stop big Zach Miller already down within the red zone area here Joy and Cade picks that one up dropping back seeing big old Brian wide open plunging forward within the five this has got to be surreal for a lot of underclassmen like Stone Boston I mean his brother Rock never played in a stage quite like this Zach Miller got dropped and Randall Cooper is in the game Stone Boston say his name he has scored the opening score on the national championship weekend so how many y'all had salona beach byu in your national championship bracket salona beach sure i had them but BYU, honestly, this was a surprise to me. I might have to look back at BYU's schedule to see how they got this far this year, but they're really feeling to me like a Wyoming or an Air Force caliber. So right now, they are not standing a chance. 14-0, we're out like an ambush in the first quarter. I think we just wanted vengeance so bad that nothing was gonna stop us. And on this third down, the drive is gonna get stopped. Pass midfield here, BYU trying to instill some change. On this third down, let's bring in the blitz, and we got to him quick. That's double coverage. Yeah. I don't know what you're doing. BYU feeling the heat early. They're going for it on fourth and one, and it paid off. Looking to make another stand here on this big play, and oh my goodness, how did he thread the needle? Barry Gunn came down with it. I thought it was contested. BYU starting to wake up now in this one, and geez, disconnect. All sophomore Zach Miller knows is national championships. He's been here two for two right now in oh, Tim. You're gonna do him like that. Okay, now let's scramble out to our left. We got some space to work. Miller time already right back into the red zone and Stone Boston picks up a few minute left let's try to find someone across the middle it's Mr. Stone proud brother moment as Rock his brothers on the sideline cheering him on on this third and goal let's bring in Gabe White the dual threat and he's wide open touchdown Gabe gets in there the DB has striked four six so far so good it has been a good first half and i'm looking for a, a good second half too third and short let's just blitz it up the middle and dang it he gets right through us let's clamp down here get the stop he's going out to the outside that was danger zone pulling away in this one special teams got involved and oh my goodness that db over pursued the pick everyone's come out to contribute in the national championship game and that's exactly what we ordered playing this kind of football i'm sorry for byu you guys never had a chance in 
and Brent, the senior that's been around for all four years, running and gunning, gets a national championship touchdown. Third and forever to go. What are they going to dial up here? And well, they dialed up a comeback route that didn't get them enough. So yeah, safe to say we just blitzed BYU quicker than they can even react in this one. It was over as it started. And Coach Phillip Rivers literally can't believe it. We're four minutes away from being a national champion. This time, he doesn't have to worry about overtime. This one was clean by the books and honestly just domination. You hear of teams that talk about, oh, revenge to her, revenge that, but our team lived up to the hype. And I can't wait to celebrate with the squad. I don't care. I'm going out there streaking. Apologies for spoiling your perfect season, BYU. We just had to do it to you guys. Playing their hearts out to the very end, even though it's going to be in vain. Hope you got some more eligibility, Glover, because this year's not your year. Fine, I guess. Go ahead and take your little consolation touchdown. But just because you did that and just because I can, I'm going to come out here and try to put some more points on the board. Just as the ultimate sign of disrespect, we want more and Cade gives us more. Thoroughly enjoying every last second of this moment, even these obscure botched punts by the BYU punter. It don't matter. That's not going to rain on our parade. And honestly, nothing can rain on our parade right now. We are king of the hill. Who is going to stop us? Number one in the nation, national champs. It's time to open up the champagne, throw the hats. We are champs victorious. I am ecstatic. It truly has not sunk in yet that we have climbed the mountain. This is incredible. We were blue balled at the end of last season and we came back with a vengeance. We were not going to be blue balled again. And so Zach Miller, the sophomore quarterback, takes us to the promised land and check this out. Holding up the trophy. It's a surreal moment. Philip Rivers is the GOAT coach of the year champs that's right oh man a sigh of relief and in celebration we have done it we have done it revenge tour is complete it's only up from here now we got offers across the board to join anyone in their mother's conference so i'm gonna need to determine what makes sense for the next step in Salona beach history and that's right san diego is now a national championship city that city has deserved and needed this for so long. I hope this result puts some San Diego Charger fans at ease because you now have a football team that is potent, deadly, can win and go toe-to-toe -to -toe against anyone. Time to go through updated school records. Brent Burrell broke his previous record of rushing yards in a single season, 997, three away from the 1K. Of course, he's the career rushing yard holder and single season rushing touchdown leader, as well as 56 in his career. Zach Miller, on the other hand, only a sophomore all-time school passing touchdown leader. John John blows Big Willie's record out the water, 35 sacks in his career. That is a Salona Beach record. That last one low-key feels untouchable. Zach with a solid 3,400 yards, 22 touchdowns. Added nine more touchdowns on the ground. And Miller spread the love around the roster. Good old John John, 12 sacks and 19 TFLs. Sophomore Tim Hawley right behind him though with six and 15 TFLs. And then Chad Slasher matched John John with tackle for loss. True freshman Gabe White with three interceptions. And senior Jimmy Turner going out in style, first team All-American. And as well, none other than our own John John who had such a storied career here. Give it up for Barry at linebacker. And then Slasher as well as Avery cracked the second team list. Love seeing freshmen all-american at right guard as well as db hawaii's quarterback beat out our guy but i mean look at the rest of the list seriously it's an all salona beach list no joke the whole offensive lines here and while that caps off a perfect 14 and 0 season it's one for the record books philip rivers one of the best coaches in college football right now just got a six-year extension to stay with salona beach and he is loyal to the hometown losing freshman safety brad keller to nevada that's an unfortunate loss but i think we got the depth to cover him and more pressing news here is big old john john first round pick this is going to be a difference maker on Sundays. Brent Burrell, a solid third round pick as well. And then Avery, Stevens, and Burton rounding out the end of the draft. Five draft picks. I'm proud of this. Offseason recruiting, only a couple guys left I'm still interested in. Joel Brown and Antoine Bird going to get all of our points. We want it. We got it. Just continuing to do great things out here. The number one signing class in all of college football. It's a historical moment right now. 13 four stars and two five stars. Yes, sir. And go ahead and peep the prestige. We are five five out of six stars. And if we have just another solid season or two, we could be maxing that thing out. Position changes and oh boy, we got a lot of athletes to work through. Already moved Chris Hicks to get him more involved to fullback. I think he'll be a good blocker, a good pass catcher, a good goal line rusher. So 
think this is a good fit for him. But yes, back to the athletes. Sean Bryant to center. And the rest of these dudes are basically receivers. I'm going to put Howard Rivera at fullback. I guess I'll put Sean White as a backup quarterback. Antoine Bird to receiver. Leonard Bush to running back. And now we got three fullbacks. That's kind of a problem. So yeah, actually, let me put Howard Rivera back to receiver. He's better there. But oh my goodness, youth movement overload. As well as over here at quarterback, we have two potential candidates for QB of the future behind Zach Miller. My initial thought here is balanced quarterback David Hall because he has 90 throw power coming into college as well as 79 speed which is more than enough to get out of some sticky situations training results and yet another thing to mark down as a Solana Beach first the first 99 overall Zach Miller welcome to the 99 club Kevin Goodman as well a 94 overall 98 speed 99 awareness cornerback Cade Holly Young 90 overall juniors time to cut some players we have eight guys we got to get rid of and I'm gonna start off with the 40 overall and then I'm gonna look at positions where we have a lot of depth and well melvin wall is no longer relevant with two stud freshmen ahead of him so he's gone a lot of running backs in this room too so i'm gonna free one up 65 overall guard as well as an 80 overall senior at the bottom of the depth chart at linebacker unfortunately michael green's gotta go two cuts left to make i think we can find some more defensive linemen and man i hate to let go of receiver they're all so talented but i'm gonna let go of 79 overall cj rogers actually i'm already having some remorse i should have just let go another running back but that's gonna do it in this one we have set everything up in preparation for the next season just one question remains will we return to the mountain west keep soaking it up with your boy king sponge and find out in the next one so don't forget to hit that subscribe button and in the meantime check out any of these videos or playlists and i'm sure you'll catch a banger in there